The winter of 1780 was one of the coldest on record in New England. It was also one of the snowiest. The Continental Army, led by George Washington, was encamped in Morristown, New Jersey, and they suffered unspeakable hardships. There were 11 consecutive days of below zero weather in Hartford, Connecticut. It even snowed in New Orleans. All of the rivers, lakes, and harbors of New England were frozen solid. 1780 was an odd year. 1780 was also the year of New England's dark day. On May 18, 1780, the sun was an unusual red color. This was the eve of New England's dark day. A dark cloud bank had obscured the sun. Later that evening, the wind changed from the west to the east, and it brought in a fog bank. As dawn came, the skies were clear, but by 10 a.m., the obscuration had begun. A black mist had blotted out the sun. Morning had surrendered to night. Panic sets in. A sheet of white paper can't be read and blends in with the darkest black velvet. Children are dismissed from school. Workers are sent home from their jobs. Churches begin to fill. Sermons preach that this was God's retribution to the American colonists for trying to disavow their parent land, England, in a war of revolution. That night, it was dark. There wasn't a star in the sky. And suddenly, the black clouds parted. And there was the blood red moon. The end was indeed at hand. Repent! Repent. In a tavern in Ipswich, Massachusetts, a local journalist who goes by the moniker Vieter is having an ale with a friend. They recognize the darkness as strange, but certainly not supernatural, and they walk outside the pub to investigate. They smell smoke. The friend insists that it's a chimney burning, but Vieter recognizes that smell as burnt leaves. He walks over to the horse trough and sees a layer of scum. It's black soot. Vieter knew that the end wasn't near. He recognizes that a major forest fire must be blowing over New England, causing the dark day. But Vieter was going to keep his opinion to himself. He didn't want the pious church to chastise him. New England's dark day wasn't due to biblical revelation or the American Revolution. It was solved by one man's logic prevailing over panic.